the infections have gotten worse. Look at all this vertical video. No, you, you had it right. You're the only one. Stop doing this. Do this. No more vertical video. I don't care. I don't care that like TikTok is and uh, YouTube stories. Uh, they're stupid. Vertical video. It's despicable. It's the worst thing on earth. It, it isn't. I'm being hyperbolic. But yes, landscape mode. Now, you want to do landscape mode with your phone because it's also very much how you hold a digital camera in one of those ones. It's because you hold it with two hands. Both of them. That's right. <laughs> two hands, right? Remember how expensive this is. Oh, my parents bought it for me. <laughs> yeah, your parents are going to make you pay for it, too. You drop this thing. Oh, gosh. You drop that thing. Mm -hmm. You're paying for it. And I need it quick because we got to replace it immediately. Two hands, landscape mode. When you're taking video, you want both hands on it. Because if you're only holding it with one hand, it's gonna shake. You're gonna make somebody barf. Just the normal rhythm of your body. We are dynamic systems. You are metal structure. Remember, calcium is metal. You are a metal structure being held together by rubber bands at the joints, full of water. You are wiggly. And that's normal. Okay, so landscape mode. Next. I think I have here. Yep. Elbows in. All right, we want to bring our elbows, because if you have your elbows out while you're doing this, that's more energy you're putting plus into the system. It makes you ounce more. It makes you wiggly. And we're trying to reduce that. So this is the same stuff. The, these five steps to getting good video on a mobile phone are the same ones that are good, getting good video on a digital camera. You need to record this. This is probably one. But seriously, yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> you have to be proud of me right now because you're going to put this on YouTube. This is your first project. It's graded by existing. Okay, so elbows in. This makes you lock up with your core. I don't want you to squeeze, right? This is not a pec exercise. Bring your elbows in. Rest them natural. Let your shoulders, let them come down natural. We're trying to take energy out of the system. Next, you want to turn with your core. Don't turn with your arms. Don't turn with your head. This is all, this puts so much energy into it, but it also turns the camera like that, the tilt on it. We don't want tilt. We want panning. We don't want tilting, which happens if you move your arms. That's just true with the digital camera as well. The way that we want to do it is we want to turn with our core muscles. The larger muscles in your body can have much more fine, smooth motion because they're larger. That's just it. That's the truth. And you know this because you take it A and B. So you got your camera, both hands, you're holding it securely. Put your elbows in, keeping those shoulders relaxed, natural position, turning with your core. That way you can pan and follow the action. All right? Very good. Good. Next, we're going to keep the subject within the middle 75% of the screen. So I'll have to turn that on me for a moment. I'm going to turn my camera back on. Okay, I'm going to bring my camera around so that you can see I've got the little bars on there. See if it's got the little crossbars on there? Right, the grid view. Turn that off. It doesn't show up. It doesn't show up in the video when someone else looks at it, but that grid is there for a reason. You want to keep people in that center 75% of the screen, right? The center 75, because every single camera on earth that you will interact with is actually shaped very similarly to your eyeball in that it is round. So the part that works the best is the center, just like your own eye. The place that you see the best is in the middle, right? Things are the best focus there. It, uh, it captures color correctly because the glass of the camera lens does actually sort of change, you know, a prism. It'll do that. So you want that grid on. It really oops. You need to flip it around. Turn it back. You want that grid on. And you want to keep whoever it is that you are observing in the middle of that grid. 
at that center 75%. Next, either become a tripod or stand in horse stance. Now some of you know horse stance, this is yoga stance. The one that's where your, your feet are shoulder width apart, your knees are slightly bent. Horse stance really hasn't worked out, but you know, I'm trying to do something. Right? I want to try and get my feet apart. I'm not moving, I'm planting. My elbows in, my shoulders are relaxed in a natural position. I'm holding the camera with two hands. I'm turning my core muscles so that I can have nice smooth movements. I can follow the action in that center 75%. I'm able to get really good video, nice and smooth. But sometimes you have an advantage. Things like desks, things like walls. Everybody get up against the wall, real quick. Mm. I'm gonna show you the door with me. Right, become a tripod. So like right now you got two feet, five pounds. Right, but if you can get your shoulder into a wall, Right? And I can take my right foot and plant it down at the bottom. I can take my left foot, hit out. Right? I'm taking me out of the equation. Get up against the wall. Go. Do it. Get it rolling. I'm taking it right against the wall. Get up against the wall. Get up against the wall. Get you moving around. Let's go for it. Plant those feet. Good, good. Good, good. Come on. Right there. Go. Feet in. Put your shoulder into it. Put your shoulder into it. Put your back into it. One foot out, one foot in, up against the wall. Put your back into it. Right? We're having three points of contact. Now follow me around the room. You will find it's very easy to get nice, smooth footage of me walking around. Even if I suddenly start going faster, it's easy to get that. I'm jerking around. I'm stopped right here. Oh, I'll go over here. Right? Very easy to get this footage because, well, you're not relying on this. You're not doing this, trying to follow me around. You got it sideways. You're holding it with both hands. Elbows in. Shoulders relaxed. Natural position. You're leaning up against something. Do the same thing with a desk, right? This is a great way to deal with your classes from now on. Most professors have kind of become cool with you using a desk. Get back to your desk. Have a seat. All right, you got your phone. We're not done. Elbow, sternum. Lean into it. Yeah, right up against the desk, right up against it. Yeah. Three points of contact, become a tripod. Right? Camera weighs nothing now. It's nice and dead level. Easy to keep me right in the middle of that. And I can be up here lecturing, and you just turn slightly with your core. And you keep me right in the middle. You get yourself up against that desk. Your footage will be viewable, it'll be usable. Because you're sitting there with vertical video and you're swiveling in your chair, as exercise science students generally tend to do, because you guys are wiggly. I got an eight year old who's just like you. He's probably going to come here. And he's just so wiggly, just like you are. Right? And you're sitting there and you got your rolly chair and it swivels and you're like this. This footage will make you throw up when you watch it. Right? But this is a great way to take notes. Why would you ever bother writing it down anymore? Just crack out the phone. Lean against the desk. Put it sideways. Record the video. Get everything they say. Get the inflection of the teacher. Oh, so much better. Right? There are two more things we have to consider, though. Two little things. One of them is sound. Now, in a room like this, Sound is probably okay. You know, it's, it, I'm talking, I'm talking loudly on purpose. I'm making it really project off the back wall. But if I'm one of those things like the chemistry professor, I happen to know there's one of them that does this to you. Okay, time to do 22. Right? And if you're up there and you're talking like this while 
You can't hear a damn thing, can you? That is so annoying. Conversely, if you're outside and you're recording your friends on the football pitch and they're running, doing a, you know, doing a play and you want to record it and you're in your stance, you've got your phone, you're ready, you're like, oh, get them on that thing. But then, you know, they're doing construction. So the bus comes by or the cement mixer, that sound as well. That'll drown everything else out. So sound is a thing you really have to be cognizant of. You have to be thinking that, how can I make this sound better? There's not much you can do with your phone. There are accessories. I'm not making you buy them. We're not dealing with sound. The other thing is light. Now in here, we have diffusers. All these, see how these lights have baffles on them? And I turn the up lights on more than I turn the down lights on. These diffusers take the light and they spread it out and they make it soft. I barely have a shadow at all, right? These sort of things show up really strongly on cameras. Our brains are designed to sort of mellow that out because humans are more important than the shadows. So these lights are good, but then you start getting the weird lights. So if I turn off the light here, oh, one more. right? I do this. All of a sudden, I've got this really bright light on me, right? For you, you can probably see me fine with your eyeballs, but I bet your cameras are starting to struggle. It doesn't look right, does it? I kind of, every once in a while, I sort of camouflage into the background. If we were outside, and that was the sun, right? Coming this way, not a problem. Going the other way, though, the sun is in your camera, you can't see anything. It just everything turns white. Lens flares happen like it was a J.J. Abrams film. Right? That's always a problem, too. So that's the other thing you need to be cognizant of. Sound and light. Where are your lights coming from? How can you mitigate sound? Now, in the editing programs, we can take the sound out. Good. Nothing you can do about the film getting, or the video, the video getting washed out from being overexposed. Okay, that is lesson one, the five steps to getting good video. You know, like a digital camera or something. Pause, or sorry, stop.